a little girl from Kansas with feelings of wanting to run away, faces the storms of life that take her on a whirlwind journey that includes a yellow brick road. Well, you all know the story I'm referring to. It's the story of the Wizard of Oz. It's a story of Dorothy struggling to try to find her way home. It's a story of her to trying to discover the real beauty of her life and how it just really intended to unfold for her. There's so much more to this story because once again, this story is our story. Did you ever notice that? How often a movie or a film, uh, maybe a book or a story that you've read or that someone is telling, it relates to you and what the journey that you're going through. Just the same, you found many Bible scriptures, Bible stories that also unfold your story and you find yourself within them because they're illustrations that help us understand spiritual truth or help us understand who we are and our deeper self. It's a wonderful tool that is used to help us understand a power within, to help us understand how to get home and how to get there. And it's a powerful tool to help us understand the value of going home. That's right. The Wizard of Oz answers all of those questions in some beautiful ways that just as scripture does for us, that there is a power within that we've always had and always owned. Dorothy had to realize that. And that that power within is a wonderful power that enables her to accomplish so many things, such as getting home, getting to the destination she desired to be at. And that that power within is a wonderful value that we can celebrate that leads us to this place we call home, a place within. The story of the Wizard of Oz is this a story that has a plot of Dorothy trying to get back home. And the journey of our life is very much so the same. It's a journey of us, each one, trying to get back home. Home. You may say, what's home? What do you mean referring to as home? Home is that place where we come to oneness. Home is that place in our spiritual journey where we discover that completion. No longer at struggle, but one with the divine, one with the goodness of God, one with the presence of God feeling so complete and so uh, uh, fulfilled in that context. It's home is coming home to Eden, returning back to that garden, coming back to that place where you walk daily with the divine. That story of the Garden of Eden in Genesis is the story of our lives, of how we have made choices that have taken us away from that divine presence. And we wanna get back, we wanna go home. There's a story of the prodigal son, talking to us about one who had left home only to discover in the journey of his life his desire to return back home. So it is that we find all these illustrations over and over inviting us to come back home, home being that place deep within, home that being that place where we discover the presence of God in its fullness, home being that place where we relax, rest, secure, that sanctuary for our lives. And that home is that heavenly experience, that heavenly experience that we're called to live right here and now. So often we think about, oh, I want to go to heaven someday. Oh, but yet the stories of the Bible, the illustrations, the parables, the scriptures are all unfolding for us, the ancient wisdom. Heaven is here and available to us right here and now. Heaven is this wonderful connection we have with the divine to experience it to the fullness there is an opportunity for each and every one of us then to go home. And today, it's time for us to go home. Just as we see the words of Dorothy that says, if I ever go looking for my heart's desire again, I won't look any further than my backyard. You see, the journey to going home, to going to the presence of God, to entering into the kingdom of heaven, the journey is really all about discovering that it's always been within as close as our backyard, right within us. And that journey of this understanding really helps us to unfold this within. And what is this within? We're talking about the soul, that which is within. The soul that is within each and every one of us. And it's really important that we understand that the soul is connected to the divine. Let's explain that. Let's look into that a little deeper. 
where we understand the creation story to be of this beautiful metaphor of exactly how the world came to be. God being light, light being that great intelligence, desiring to experience its own self. The creative power then began to engage in the creative thought, that contemplation. God saying, let there be light, beginning everything happens with thought for the creative power unfolds as we first think. As we think, then so it manifests. So that thought came. I want to experience this wonderful uh, uh, opportunity to share light and love with uh, others than just that which is of myself. And so this divine light was shattered into millions of shards of light. The ancients began to describe it in this way, that, that let there be light was this great explosion. Science calls it the Big Bang Theory. We call it this, the expression of God. God's contemplating God's own self. And as God did, let there be light, that light shattered all throughout the universe. Everything is filled with that energy of light. Everything in this world, everything within our universe is filled with that. And everything is part of that divine light. Every shard being part of that light, every shard being a spark of the divine. That divine spark then is the little part of God that is in each and every one of us. And that simple spark has all the power to ignite a great inferno. You know how it is, as we've watched in the news, the California forest fires that have started by just a simple spark. All it took was just a little bit to ignite a huge inferno that spread thousands of miles in a destructive manner. That power of that raging inferno, it all began with that little spark because everything of the raging inferno was found within the little spark. So it is that we understand that for each and every one of us, the soul of each and every one of us is a spark of the divine, filled with the raging power of the divine presence that we call God, filled with all that is of God. It's in you, it's flowing in you right now and available for you to tap into. That wonderful powers, this divine spark is the portion of God then that resides within each and every human being. Now God is pure light and we have a portion of that pure light deep within our souls. And every being then is called then to liberate that light. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. And we're called to liberate that light, to share that light, to demonstrate that light, to reveal that light. But over the course of time in our lives, what we've discovered is that there have been these things that cover over that light. For we began this world with the understanding of wonderful radiance of love and grace and peace. But then as a child, we're taught hate and fear and stress and worry. All these things then begin to cover our lives, almost as if a bushel is covering that light. How many of you remember that childhood song? This the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. And there's a beautiful verse that says, hide it under a bushel. No, I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let, we're not going to hide it in any way. Years ago, working in Kenya, we would sing it in Swahili. Taya yangu yaropo, ita nani sha, nani sha, nani sha, nani sha. Singing that song of this the light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Hide it under a bushel? No, 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 no. We're going to radiate that light. Now that's our calling. Because there's a light within each and every one of us. A light that is brilliant and vibrant. It is our portion of the divine. It is the spark of God within each and every one. You know how it is, you get a box of chocolates and you're trying to find out what's inside with each one. And what do you do? You press on them, you crack them open, you smash them a little bit, you squeeze them to find out what's inside. And smashing that outer, outer shell, that chocolate then reveals the tasty essence inside. So too, the challenges of what we go through help us create the cracks in this hard shell of life that we've created for ourselves. But these challenges that we're going through, they're opportunities to break open that shell, to crack open that facade that has covered us, 
could break open that sort of covering that has come through the life of being jaded with fear and doubt and worry and challenge over and over again within our lives. But we break it open to radiate this light and to allow it to shine within the world. Those little cracks are there as opportunities then for us to just be that beacon that we're called to be and allow that inner light within us to be a beacon for others to find their way home too. For the goal of life then is to allow that divine spark to shine and to radiate. For when we understand that this is the soul, the spark of the divine, we understand our relationship then with the divine source, that the soul is a fragment of God. Do you ever think about that? You're a fragment of God. You're a fragment of God. We may think about uh, driving down a mountain road and finding as the, along the roadway uh, a landslide, a boulders that have fallen off or broken away from the mountain. And as they tumble down, they are fragments of the mountain. They are fragments that contain all the essence of this rock formation that we call the mountain. And this is a break off or a fragment of it. So we find you and I, we're all fragments of the divine. The soul is a fragment of our God, the very part of God. And that soul is the spark of light and our goal then is to let it shine. And quite often our problem is that we're not truly consciously aware of that every single day of our life. We haven't really focused in on this. We're not fully consciously aware that we're a spark of the divine, that that's who we are. First, uh, Second Timothy chapter four, 1, verse 14 says, guard through the Holy Spirit who dwells in us, the treasure which has been entrusted in you, which dwells in you. This divine power, presence, all that is of the goodness of God, it's dwelling in you right now. And you can claim that for your day-to-day -day journey and allow then that goodness to radiate from within. As I opened up today's celebration service, sharing with you that there are many religious traditions that are constantly pointing out what's wrong with humanity. Everyone's a sinner. Everyone has fallen short. Everyone has made mistakes. And all we hear over and over again is our failures, our shortcomings, and our sins, and what is wrong with us as a human a being. Yet the positive, powerful word of God is filled with the affirmation of all that is good within you. And what is good within you is this spark of the divine. Today, it's your opportunity to come home to this reality that the spark of God dwells deep within you in your life. It's through this awareness that we understand that the power of God is in us. So God is not distant, for God is within. God is not far and removed. God is within. When the scripture says, I will never leave you nor forsake you, it's not possible. For you are part of all that is of the divine. You are part of God. You are a fragment. That soul is a fragment of the divine. We sing this song. You are the face of God. I hold you in my heart. You are a part of me. You are the face of God. You see, we're each then a part of one another, for we're all part of the same. So as we look at those boulders that have fallen down in the landslide along the road's pathway, we find this boulder, that boulder, all, all the boulders having come from the same mountain, having the same essence. There's a commonality amongst them. There's a commonality between you and me and each and every one of us, that we are each a spark of the divine, each holding within us the fragment of God, each holding within us the power, the presence, the might, the grace, the love, the compassion of the divine within us. For well, we're made in that light. That's so crucial. Our challenge is we don't often think about that on a day-to-day -day basis. So we forget and we slip into our failures and our shortcomings. We focus more and more about what is wrong with one another and what is wrong with humanity rather than celebrating and calling forth, calling forth and speaking the good. I see the presence of God in you. 
It's so important that we embrace that spirit of namaste that says the God in me sees the God in you. And that we're doing that each and every day, acknowledging, wait a minute, the God in me, the spark of the divine, the very essence that I'm created within me, it sees from a different perspective than the human nature and the ego would. It sees God in everyone. It sees the love in you. It sees the grace in you. It sees the good in you. And as I see you in that perspective, I realize that we are all one. And it brings us into the sense of harmony and unity with one another. I want to let you know that as the soul within, as the soul is the spark of the divine, as that soul is this uh, fragment of God, it's ever evolving. Your soul is evolving. During this lifetime that you have here on earth, it's evolving in some unique way. Now, some souls are evolving even quicker than others, some moving a little slowly. Dorothy's journey along the Yellow Brick Road was an evolution, just as our day-to-day -day journey in this world is an evolution of the soul. And she awakened to the values of family and the love of family. And our calling as we evolve the soul is to do the same, to awaken to the very love that's present in our world, love to be shared with one another as we break through the facades, crack open the shells, and let the love of God radiate within our lives. You see, what's so important is that we have embraced this experience within our lives. It's important to understand how your soul has evolved. For this evolution has been through your responses to life. I want you to get this. This is how you evolve. This is how your soul grows. This is how it expands. Through the everyday experiences that you're going through and how you respond to them. Because we're all going through all kinds of things. Great days with lots of sunshine. Rainy days with lots of clouds. We're all going through things of great experiences of joy and happiness, sadness and sorrow. We go through these things. And the key thing is the soul evolves as we examine how have we responded to the challenges of life. These are opportunities for us to radiate, to show and reveal the spark of the divine, to show God. Oh, but sometimes we've chosen not our highest and best. And we haven't always chosen to reveal the divine power and presence, to reveal that we are the fragment of the divine, ready to radiate. We've evolved through this responses to everything that life brings to us. Life may bring you some hardships. How will you respond to it? Will you take time to think, wait a minute, I can respond with the power, presence, and might and authority of God, knowing that God is making a way when there seems to be no way. Or I can respond with anger and resentment and blame and not taking responsibility for the experiences I'm going through and just venting it all and blaming everybody else. But you see, the choices are ours. And the soul evolves by the choices we make through our responses to the experiences we go through. There's not a one of us who hasn't gone through some experience that's been a challenge in our life. But each and every one of us has the same opportunity to use those challenges to unfold the goodness, to reveal the light of God, to reveal the good that is within. Let me tell you this, this is how you can evolve that soul and be equipped to respond properly, to respond with goodness, to respond with love, to respond with righteousness, which is right thinking. This is how it happens for us because it happens when we develop a communication with our soul through the power of meditation. What is meditation? You know, we've kind of got confused with meditation in a Western world, and we are thinking it is something from an Eastern tradition that's not really applicable to our lives, but it's simply this. It's about being still, centering our lives in the quiet and in the silence, allowing that which is from within the spark of the divine, that inner knowledge, that inner wisdom to rise up and unfold, to shape our lives and to help equip us for the challenges that we go through in the day-to-day -day journey. For meditation, the silence allows us to open up this line of communication with the soul. 
that we really are in touch with our inner being, our self, as to who we are. It provides a gateway to understanding. For meditation quiets the mind, enable to make you more receptive to the inner world of the soul, and it unveils your true self, and it connects you with the, your uh, God consciousness, the God awareness in a greater way. Now, you've always had the ability to turn on these spiritual faculties, to turn on this power of God. You've always had the power and the ability within you. You see, sometimes we forget that, and it's good to remind ourselves that the power is all, you came equipped into this world. You came with everything that was needed in this world. God has supplied you with all the equipment you need to accomplish your spiritual goals. And you have always been wired for spirituality, yet you are often taking the meditative actions uh, that will fire up this aspect of your brain, the mystical side of your brain, to be more in tune with the Spirit of God. So as we're meditating, we're actually centering and creating that channel for the divine presence to speak and unfold that which is already there and present. It's tuning in to the right frequency. That's all it is. That's what meditation is. It's enabling you to dial your radio, your inner radio to the right station to get in tune with the frequency of the divine that's ever flowing through this world. You know, there's a radio station and its vibrations and frequencies are flowing through this world right now, but we're not tuned into it, so we're not hearing 94.1 or 104.6 .4, or whatever it may be that's your favorite station. Whatever it may be, you're not tuned to it currently. That's why you're not hearing it. Ah, but when we tune into the frequency, we hear it. And that's what your time in meditation will do. Quiet, being centered, open to the presence of God, and allowing it to rise up within you and unfold infinite wisdom for our lives. It's like this. Your mind is similar to a computer. When you make a commitment to meditate, it's like you're adding a new program to your spiritual hard drive. You're able to use the mind then in new ways, just like a computer can do after a new program has been installed. So imagine God as the internet. Through meditation, you've already installed a program that will allow you to connect with God, the internet. Wow. So the scripture says, when you pray, enter into your closet, close the door, and the Father will reward you in secret reward you within, in that secret space within. The rewards are coming within you as you're in this meditative state, so centered, so at peace, so at rest, so open to the very voice of God, that that internet, that God internet, shall we say, begins to unfold the wisdom, the knowledge, the answers to every solution that are there. Meditation prepares a channel for your brain then to receive knowledge. That's right. That's That knowledge has been stored in the universal mind of God that's there because remember, you're a fragment of God and God is this infinite wisdom, right? So you're a fragment of that infinite wisdom. You have then the capability already equipped within you to just download and welcome the very programs of the internet to fill you with the knowledge of the divine for you. This allows you then to move from this realm of the physical world, of this third dimension, to move into a new dimension of the fourth dimension of spirituality, of thinking and seeing and knowing from a spiritual perspective that awakens your intuition, that awakens your ability to be intuitive, that awakens your ability to allow the Holy Spirit to speak and to guide and direct your life in new ways. Now, Dorothy, all along, she wanted to return to where she belonged. And the power was always with her. She just had to go on this journey to realize it. And in the end, the voice of the uh, good witch was, you know, just simply click your heels. And she began to say, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. Well, today, your soul deep within is wanting to return home to go and to dwell in this divine presence, this presence of perfect peace, this presence of perfect awareness, this presence of perfect comfort, this presence of divine love, 
It wants to come home. It wants to come home. So in this moment, all we need to say is there's no place like the divine. There's no place like the divine. There's no place like within. There's no place like within. There's no place like being one with God. There's no place like being one with God. You have traveled the yellow brick road of this life. And it's time to come home to the presence of God. It's time to just simply rest in knowing I am a spark of the divine. I am a revelation of God. And within me, this simple spark is all the power of a great inferno, a great inferno, a great fire. It's burning within me and that power is there to enable me to face every challenge and to respond in a healthy and right way, to respond in a way that evolves my soul, that I face the challenge not with fear, I face the challenge not with doubt, I face the challenge not with blame, but I face the challenge and allow it to shape and mold my life, to evolve the soul on the journey that it is here on earth. It's time for the soul to experience here and now, the joy, the power, the peace, the love of being one with the divine presence. You've traveled the whirlwind of life. You have been turned upside and down. Your house may feel like it's landed in another world. It's time for you to come home more than just click your heels. It's time for you to pronounce, I have always had the power within and I awake you to it right now. It's time to come home. Amen.